And now I'm joined by Franco Terrazano, the federal director of the Canadians Taxpayers Federation, to break down the latest PBO report on the carbon tax. Are you actually getting out ahead because of it? The federal government certainly wants you to think so. Franco, so thank you so much for being here today. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So obviously, we're really grateful for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation and for all the work that you guys do to break down these numbers for Canadians and actually get to the heart of what's going on. We know there's been a lot of disinformation from the Trudeau Liberals about the carbon tax, and they seem desperate to convince Canadians that it's benefiting us. Why don't you start by breaking down these latest numbers from the PBO? What does it actually say about how Canadians are being impacted by the carbon tax? Well, it's costing us big time. And it's costing us more, hundreds of dollars more than what we're getting back in rebates, right? So the PBO, the Parliamentary Budget Officer, which is the government's own independent nonpartisan budget watchdog, is proving once again with like its third report, it's proving what Canadians outside of the political bubble in Ottawa already know, that the carbon tax is making our lives more expensive. So here are the numbers, folks. That according to the PBO, the carbon tax will cost the average family up to $399 more this year than what they're getting back in rebates. But of course, Trudeau plans to make your life more expensive by cranking up the carbon tax every single year. So by 2030, the carbon tax will cost the average family up to $903 more than what they're getting back in rebates. But you know what, folks? Even those huge costs downplay the total costs over those time, right? So between now and the end of 2030, the carbon tax will cost the average family up to $4,300 more than what they're getting back in rebates. So PBO confirming what most Canadians already know is that the carbon tax makes our life more expensive and is a huge drag on the Canadian economy. With this Liberal government, a trend that we've seen more so than with any other government that I've personally covered is really just uh, hard-headedness. They seem so unwilling to change directions, even when it's been proven time and time again that the policies they're putting forward aren't working for Canadians. We've even seen BC Premier David Eby, obviously in the midst of an election, change his tune on carbon tax, carbon pricing, you know, like they usually like to use more euphemisms to refer to it because it's so unpopular. Why do you think that the true Trudeau government hasn't changed directions on the carbon tax. Is it just something that they believe they're so tied to ideologically that they're unwilling mm. to, to, to change their tune on it? You know, that's a really good question. And the honest answer is, I don't know. Like, I really don't know, right? Because you can see that they're sticking to the carbon tax as of yet to their own detriment, right? Everyone can read the same polls that show the support for the liberals are plummeting. Well, let's ask ourselves, why support? For the liberals in ottawa are plummeting it's because they are making life too expensive and like the key example is the carbon tax and you know the reason the carbon tax is so damaging so hurtful for so many canadians is because it it, it impacts almost every aspect of canadian life well canada is a very big country guess what the carbon tax makes it more expensive for you to get around for you to fuel up your car to get to work or to take the kids to hockey practice well canada is a very cold place and guess what the carbon tax makes it more expensive for you to stay warm right the carbon tax on natural gas alone this year will cost the average family like 360 bucks and that's just the carbon tax on natural gas uh well guess what we all need to eat and the carbon tax stings you there too right? The carbon tax makes it more expensive for farmers to grow food. The carbon tax makes it more expensive for truckers to deliver the food. And of course, the carbon tax makes it more expensive for you to buy food. And let's not forget our economy, which is so reliant on Canada's abundant natural resources. Well, the carbon tax will cost our Canadian economy like $12 billion this year alone. You know, I just want to sort of even take a stab at that. It was funny. I was reading the news today and Stephen Gibo, our federal environment minister, his press secretary even admitted in media, she said, you know, the carbon tax gets a lot of negative attention. I suspect one of the reasons the liberals aren't willing to change their tune on this is because they've been pushing it so hard for so long that it would basically just admit 
the level of government incompetence and that they are not able to govern Canadians properly. I don't know if it's something that they could really change their tune on because I suspect it would lead to the fall of the government because it's been something they've been pushing so hard for so long. And it's really, if you think about the liberal government, this has been one of their pinnacle policies from day one. This is something that they've been pushing so hard since Trudeau was elected. So I don't know if they can change their tune on it. I know Canadians are hoping that we'll be heading to the polls federally soon. Speaking of Yibo, we have him once again trying to justify this tax. Let's roll this clip of him in the House of Commons. I want to get your reaction to it, Franco. Considering only the fiscal impact of the federal fuel charge, PBO estimates that average household in each of the backstop provinces in 2030-2031 will see a net gain receiving more from the Canada carbon rebate than the total amount they pay in federal fuel charge. That's what the PBO report says. So now's the time to clear the air on Pierre Polyev's big lie to Canadian. He's been misleading Canadian. The PBO is very clear. Canadi more Canadians get money back from the Car Canada carbon rebate than, than what they pay. What is also clear is that our plan is working. We've never seen in our history before emissions go down at a time of full economic growth in this country. That, that has never happened before. Okay, I'm going to let you respond to the actual content of what he said there. But just off the top, just kind of reading his body language, nothing says I know the facts, like literally reading off of a piece of paper like this is you're the federal environment minister, you literally have one job, you can't even memorize basic facts to read them to the media, you understand this so little that you actually have to read the report. Like I could do that. Like anyone could do that. <laughs> Go oh, ahead, Rachel. Rachel, uh, he kind of let the cat out of the bag when he said, quote, only the fiscal impacts, right? Ignore the big costs in the room. Ignore the elephant in the room. Uh, you know what, Gibo, minister, not so fast because you're not considering the full cost of the carbon tax, right? Rachel, what he said is like me saying, yeah, I'm sticking to my diet if you don't count the big mac and fries and beer that I had Saturday night. Right. Well, you can't just look at one part of the cost. You got to look at all of the costs. And what, as I mentioned, right, the carbon tax, it doesn't just cost you when you go to the gas pumps. It doesn't just cost you when you heat your home. Right. It costs you in almost every aspect of life where the carbon tax costs are passed throughout the entire economy. Just as an example. Right. When a farmer is growing food, well, the carbon tax will cost farmers like a billion dollars by 2030. Then you got to have a trucker to deliver the food. Well, the carbon tax costs truckers about $2 billion this year alone. So you can see how the carbon tax has this trickle effect throughout the entire Canadian economy, right? So <laughs> Guibault isn't even covering the full costs, right? But the parliamentary budget officer, looked at all of the costs and when you look at all of the costs the carbon tax will cost average families hundreds of dollars more than they get back in rebates oh by the way the pbo's numbers only look at the consumer carbon tax right you're also paying an industrial carbon tax and another carbon tax that trudeau buried in fuel regulation so at the end of the day the carbon tax is costing canadians big time and you know what i think the liberals even know that Franco, just my last question for you here. I talk to Chris Sims, the Alberta director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation all the time. And she tells me a lot of, you know, really heart wrenching stories about how many, how much you guys are hearing from Canadians about how they're really struggling. With regards to this latest report, I mean, I know there's also just a level of fatigue with the Liberal government. It seems like it's bad news all the time with them. But you guys often get more of a personal element when you're hearing from people who are, you know, really struggling to make ends meet, losing their homes, can't pay for gas, can't pay for groceries. Have you heard from Canadians about this latest report? Well, the big thing that we're getting from Canadians from this latest report, we hear from Canadians all the time struggling to make ends meet. But from this latest report, it's kind of, well, no duh. Of course, the carbon tax is making life more expensive. Of course, the carbon tax costs people more than what they get back in rebates, right? Like, think about it. The government also charges its sales tax on top of the carbon tax, costing Canadians hundreds of millions of dollars. And that tax on tax money isn't rebated back. Right. The government is also spending like two hundred million dollars hiring the bureaucrats to administer the carbon tax. So 
There's no way that a government can impose a carbon tax, skim hundreds of millions of dollars off the top, then charge its sales tax on top of the carbon tax, and somehow make everyone better off. And Rachel, you know, I mentioned that even the liberals know the carbon tax makes life more expensive. Case in point, last year, the liberal government, Trudeau, surrounded by his Atlantic Canadian caucus, announced that he would take the carbon tax off of furnace oil for a couple of years to provide relief. Well, if the carbon tax isn't making life more expensive, why would Trudeau take the carbon tax off of furnace oil? That was an admission that the carbon tax makes life more expensive, and it was also an admission that the carbon tax is about politics, not the planet. Franco, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me on.